We're here with Dr. Zita Rosenberg, the Chief Executive Officer of the International Partnership for Microbicides. Welcome, Dr. Rosenberg. Thank you very much. So the first generation of microbicides, the, the, the candidates themselves were not successful, but we still learned something from the trials. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Sure. Well, for the early generation of products were based on approaches before we really knew how to treat HIV infection mm -hmm. very well, so they weren't specific to HIV. Mm -hmm. There still are two of those products that are remaining in trials that we'll know about by the end of this year, early mm -hmm. next year. And and so it is not kind of surprising that they were not highly mm -hmm. effective, and we're of course disappointed that they weren't mm -hmm. effective at all. Um, but what we learned is that sometimes women often have trouble using the products mm -hmm. during the trials, mm -hmm. and that the design needs to be of a product that women can adapt more easily into okay. their lives, and that we need really potent drugs. Right. Um, but we also learned that we can do these trials, mm -hmm. and that women really want to be a part of the studies, so mm -hmm. that the need for microbicides has been reinforced over and over again. And, and obviously that need has not gone away. Absolutely. So the next generation of products mm -hmm. are based on highly active antiretrovirals. So the drugs that we know work so well. Mm -hmm. And we've been able now to work with the pharmaceutical companies mm -hmm. and acquire royalty-free licenses mm -hmm. to develop these antivirals as mm -hmm. microbicides. Mm -hmm. And because they are small molecules, mm -hmm. they can get into formulations that the older versions couldn't, right. so they can get into intravaginal mm -hmm. rings and importantly get out of the ring. Right. Um, and some of them have very long half-lives mm -hmm. in the vaginal tissue, mm -hmm. so they can adapt themselves for once daily use. Right. So the, the product development side mm -hmm. is really novel and moving forward mm -hmm. with products mm -hmm. that will make it easier for women to use with drugs that are more mm -hmm. potent. Mm -hmm. And so I think there's a huge amount of optimism for the next generation that we've got better products mm -hmm. all in all and that we know how to do these trials because they have been done before. Mm -hmm. and, and that combination is going to give us a successful microbicide. That's great. And the delivery mechanism really is important because Absolutely. things like the ring, which a woman can insert and ha not have it be at all connected to the time of exactly, intercourse. Exactly, and even a daily use gel could right. be the same thing. Right. Or just the way PrEP mm -hmm. has a daily use pill, right. a daily use gel so a woman can put it in the morning or last thing at night and it yes. doesn't have to be predictive of when you're going to have right. sex. Right, okay. Um, so in terms of rectal microbicides, there are activists that are really concerned yes. that we want to move that forward as quickly Absolutely. as we can too. Absolutely. What are we doing in that regard? Well, there are a number of investigators around the world who are working mm -hmm. on the research into rectal mm -hmm. microbicides, understanding where the product needs to go. Mm -hmm. You need to know where transmission occurs mm -hmm. through rectal sex. Sure. The vagina is actually, it's easier. It's mm -hmm. a more closed environment. Mm -hmm. We know a lot more mm -hmm. about um, uh, penile vaginal mm -hmm. uh, transmission, mm -hmm. but for rectal intercourse, if indeed the transmission event is occurring far away from where the product is mm -hmm. applied, how can you make sure a drug is where you need it to right. be? So the product development approach needs to be different. Right. We need to know the mechanisms of transmission much better, right. and then we need to design the product mm -hmm. to be able to be at the right place at the right time right. for prevention. So. The proof of concept for a vaginal microbicide is going to be easier. Mm -hmm. But once you have that proof of concept, then you know that a topically delivered antiretroviral mm -hmm. can prevent infection. Mm -hmm. And as those efficacy trials are going on, the product development for the rectal side should should also be moving forward. Great. And there are a lot of very and the activists are crucial in this right. to be able to push that research agenda. Right. So the International Partnership for Microbicides has been really fundamental in helping to license possible candidates from the pharmaceutical industry and others. Can you tell me a little bit about what the IPM does and, and what you're doing? Sure. Well, we were created in 2002 mm -hmm. as a product development partnership, mm -hmm. which in some ways is a nonprofit drug development com company. Right. And, and so what we do is we will outsource as much as we can to mm -hmm. others who have um, the quality and the speed that mm -hmm. we need. But in order to actually do the work, we needed these licenses. Mm -hmm. And so our very first um, order of business was to talk to the companies. Mm -hmm. And over the last several years, we now have six licenses mm -hmm. um, from uh, major pharma, mm -hmm. including Tebow Tech and Pfizer, mm -hmm. Gilead, BMS, Merck, and, mm -hmm. and that's terrific. So we are able to develop these products and manufacture and distribute in developing countries. Mm -hmm. So they become generic immediately. Mm -hmm. We also have, and, and made sure that we had non-exclusive licenses mm -hmm. so that anyone else who could do this faster mm -hmm. or better gets access to these drugs. Which we don't want to 
own them. We right. just want to develop them That's and get fantastic. them out there. So, um, so it's really been a crucial part of, of, of our mission. Um, right. and, uh, and then put in place everything we need to do to get them moving as fast as possible. Okay, well, thank you so much for spending time with us. You're very welcome.